I do care what you do with this information because it is important to our survival as a species. It's important to our planet. It is important for the world. Well, uh, okay, as far as the testimony goes, we'll start with that, I guess. Um, I've been saved for about seven months now, and my whole thing started way before I had any idea about becoming a Christian. Um, it started for me way back, way back, uh, when I was just barely an adult. I was about 18, 19 years old, and I had this buddy who would tell me all of these, you know, crazy outlandish things about the people running the world, and he purposely told me the craziest stuff he could possibly tell me that was provable, like... The leaders of the world are really Luciferians or Satanists, and they conduct a human sacrifice in front of a 40-foot stone owl. It's called the cremation of care, and he explained that to me and, you know, a bunch of other things. And eventually I had had enough, and I was like, okay, like, this is, this is some nonsense. I'm going to debunk this in an hour with a Google search. Seriously, just stop. <laughs> and the next day I sat down in front of a computer, and I, you know, began typing it up, and sure enough, I was, you know, the the weirdo 12 hours later, still in front of my computer screen verifying information that I couldn't believe, and even at that point, you know, as, as provable and accurate um, as this information was, and he was not a Christian, by the way, he just wanted me to look into this because he felt it was important to know how the world works, he wasn't researching the New World Order from a Christian perspective, and, you know, although I did see the clear connection that, yes, these people do worship Satan or Lucifer, and they are engaged in these activities, these are the people who control the planet, I still didn't put it together in my head, I didn't, I wouldn't allow myself to give Christianity legitimacy, I, for whatever reason, just couldn't do it, when you don't want to believe in something, you just kind of shrug it off, so I did, and, uh, I kept going with the New World Order research, though, and, I mean, it, it got me, I got into 9-11, I started looking into all that stuff, and I was like, good lord, this is so important, so I was into the political and economic aspect of the research, and, you know, from just from the standpoint of, wow, this is crazy, if this is really going on, we need to alert the world and, you know, change this whole thing and better humanity. So I started doing this research from that perspective, and I keep noticing these weird things. Like, I keep bumping into these researchers that either only cover a certain piece of this agenda, or you know, accurately, and they happen to be Christian researchers, or they're a Christian researcher who happens to be getting snuffed out, or they're, you know, the only ones that will cover, uh, like I said, certain parts of the conspiracy, uh, certain ideas, but they always do it from a Christian perspective, and although they do it from a Christian perspective, they always seem to be correct and legit, and these are always the guys that seem to be getting popped off, and, you know, it was like God was tapping me on the shoulder with, you know, researcher by researcher that I would go through, and... You know, it's kind of like saying, hey, do you get it yet? <laughs> I'm here. And, you know, eventually I came across this documentary uh, called Conspiratus, and this is a film that put everything together. And, I mean, this is when I had gotten into the, the you know, alien agenda aspect of it, the UFO uh, angle and all that. So, I, had, you know, that was that was not new to me, I had experienced with all that stuff, and I didn't, you know, I wasn't to the point where I was like, oh, aliens are demons, you know, I totally wasn't there yet, but I was just putting all this stuff together, and I watched this film, and it put it all together in, you know, the only context that I had ever seen it put together, where it literally made every aspect of this grand conspiracy make sense. The only problem was it was done from essentially a Christian perspective. And I was like, oh, all right, now i got work to do. i got to debunk this nonsense, right? So I sit down and try to debunk that film. And I start with an interview in it. And the interview is about three hours and 20 minutes long. Now, before I tell you the next part, which is the big part of the story, you got to understand something about me just as a person. Um, before this happened, I had suffered from depression for, I don't know, probably five years or so, and the last number of months, it had been getting worse and worse and worse, and uh, I was just sitting there in my room one day doing research, trying to debunk this film, and I'm about an hour or 
so through this three hour and 20 minute interview. Um, and I was trying to debunk it. There was a guy named Roger Morneau, and the interview is called A Trip into the Supernatural. You can find it um youtube.com slash wearechangeoshkosh. I think I have it favorited. Um, but uh, super interesting interview. This guy came out of a group of people who he said were very, very prominent figures, people that you would know by name if you saw them as far as fame and stuff like that. And he said that he came from, you know, he was going to be initiated officially into this coven of, of demon worshipers and spirit conjurers. And he got saved by Christ and found his way out. And I'm about an hour into this guy's interview trying to look for, you know, funny eye motions or just BS, logical fallacies in his story, whatever I can, you know, find to debunk it. And uh, I'm sitting in front of my computer screen, and all of a sudden it felt like maybe a pound and a half just left my body, just went straight up, just straight out of me. And I don't, I didn't see anything, no idea what exactly it was other than, you know, whatever attachments demonically I might have had. And, you know, previously I definitely did have a dark past. Um, I don't have enough time to get into all of that. I can, you can check out my testimony or maybe I'll do some addendum to it or whatever. But, um, yeah, long story short, I'm looking around my room and I'm just waiting for the next weird thing to happen. Because I'm like, I just felt something invisible leave my body and go straight up. And I didn't see anything happen. <laughs> and I'm looking around my room, you know, just waiting well okay what's going to happen next and about a minute goes by and nothing happens and you know i get my wits back about me and i'm like okay seems like everything's fairly normal here and then all of a sudden it hit me i was like well wait a minute kind of strange i'm not depressed right now and then i just wait you know waiting for it to come back because i'm used to just being depressed all the time surely it must return and nothing 10, 20 seconds goes by, half a minute, and then it really started to set in. I was like, I'm really not depressed. I'm just, I'm actually not depressed. Not that I'm just temporarily not depressed, because I'm just, you know, what happened was weird. I'm actually just not depressed. It's gone. <laughs> and that was the most amazing thing. Um, anybody out there has ever been, you know, suffered from severe depression. And, you know, I mean, I used to be a cutter, you know, severe depression. And just felt, you know, had that taken away by anything, whether it be God or you know, be it any sort of, you know, cognitive therapy, anything at all. Like, what if you suffer from severe depression and you know what it's like to be in that place and then to just feel normal, to feel normal after feeling like that is to feel indescribably, ecstatically happy to the normal person. So for the first time in years, years, I was just, I mean, I was hopping up and down, literally, I'm not even, I'm not exaggerating right now. I was literally hopping up and down in my room. I was so happy. I was like, this is unbelievable. How did this happen? And, you know, I mean, I instantly knew what it was. I, I put everything together. I was like, man, the last 26 years of my life literally just led to this. And interesting thing about this scenario is that my conviction was so strong in, right away, believe it or not, that um, that night I ended up uh, over at a buddy's house. I have a friend who claims that he's – he, he says he's a third-degree Freemason. I don't know if he's actually only a third-degree Mason. He may be or may not be a higher level. I don't know, but I don't get too close to the guy just in case. But the point is that he's been claiming to be a devoted Christian for quite some time, and I actually believe that he probably is. I just believe he's deceived, and I believe that he likes nice things and having good connections. And you know, I think he's deceived and blinded by certain things. I don't necessarily think he's a terrible guy, but... He knows about the New World Order, and he knows about Freemasonry, and he knows what they really are at the highest levels, and I ended up over at his house because he had actually for months been trying to get me to, you know, look into Jesus, and I was just, I was not having it, you know, I was one of those people where, you know, you say Jesus, you know, one too many times to me, and I'm just going to be like, all right, dude, you're deleted from my phone, or, you know, don't talk to me for a month or whatever, like, I would just get irritated, you know, and just uh, shove it away. Well, that happened, and he sent me one too many emails, you know, in a period of a week or whatever, and stopped talking to him for a month or two, and, you know, not completely, just, you know, I barely talked to him, talked to him maybe once a month or something for a while, and then uh, all of a sudden, the roles are completely reversed. The night that I, the day that I got saved, that evening, I'm over at his house, I'm not going to tell you his name, but I'm over at my buddy's house, 
I, I own a copy of Morals and Dogma, right? I, pur- I purchased it for research purposes, research in the New World Order, and I'm over at the Freemason's house quoting scripture and morals and dogma back-to-back, trying to get him out of Freemasonry, talking about, dude, your faith. What do you think you're doing? So that uh, that is, for the most part, my testimony. Um, I can also tell you a little bit about sleep paralysis. Um, I have been attacked by a demon twice. I'll save that for a later show because I've already been taking up enough time. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's my that's my testimony. Hopefully you guys out there can get something from it. Um, if there's anything to be learned from it, it's, you know, no matter what you think, like, you know, Tom was saying earlier, no matter what you think that you've done, no matter how bad what you have done actually is, it doesn't matter how bad it actually is. No matter how bad it actually is, Jesus will save you. All you have to do is trust in him. And I didn't want to. It wasn't even my choice to become religious. Like, God was like, showed me what he was and was like, look, man, this is what I can do. This is the deal. And it's either you understand this and you know it and you accept it and you know what the truth is and you deal with it and you move forward on that basis or you lie to yourself for the rest of your life. And I'm not sure you can do that. Yeah. Mark, Mark, thank you so much, man. Amazing, amazing story. I, I got a question for you. What would you say for anybody who could be listening uh, out there who had an attitude like you did, the kind of attitude where if you say Jesus too many times, I'm going to delete you from my phone. What would you say to those people out there? I would say that, you know, I used to think that I was a really open-minded person, and I used to think that I had things real well figured out, and... You know, um, when people, first of all, let me speak to Christians out there. Let me know, I don't, uh, I'll address the non-believers in a second. But first, let me address the Christians. All you Christians out there, number one, please, I know it's hard sometimes, but please, especially when you care about somebody and you're just trying to save them, please don't be too pushy because you will turn them off. Because I had plenty of people who were just trying to save me, and they meant the best, and they had Jesus in their heart, and they were only trying to do a good thing. And I look back on this now, and I realize that. But at the time, when you're in that mind frame, all you hear is Jesus, and you shut down. You're just like, bam, programming, anti-Jesus, blah, see you later. So Christians out there, please plant the seeds, but don't be too pushy, and don't look to harvest too quickly. (laughs) Number one. That's good advice. Um, aside from that, I would, I would say to anybody out there who thinks that you have things figured out, to anybody who thinks you have an open mind or that you know what the Bible is, let me tell you right now, from somebody who thought they knew what the Bible was, who thought they knew what religion was and what God and Jesus' teachings were, I came to find out that once I read the Bible and once I understood what the teachings of Jesus Christ actually were, and what the words of the book actually said, not what I heard a preacher on TV say, not what I heard my family or anybody else talk about, but once I actually read it for myself, and once I sat down, and uh, one film that was a great help to me was uh, Chris Pinto's The Untold History of the Bible, A Lamp in the Dark. It's like a three-hour film, but it's a film that everybody should be forced to watch in history class. I swear. It's, it's unbelievable. And once I found out how much of an effort that was made to keep the truth of the Bible from society. And I had no idea about that. I didn't know that the church tried to keep the actual Bible uh, from being read for 1,600 years. That's amazing. Most people think that people are just pushing Jesus all over the place. And the truth is that if you try to push the real gospel, what the Bible truly says, you won't get promoted. You won't be a pastor at a major church. You won't have a spot on TV like Pastor Hagee. You're not going to get there. They only allow preachers of false gospels into these positions to corral the public. And that's, long story short, I thought I knew what religion was, and I didn't. All of my beefs were legitimate. All of you out there who think that you have beefs with religion and they're legit, the beefs that you have are probably legit. I had beefs with molester priests, too, because that's the priests should not be molesting people any, in any way, shape, or form. That's terrible. But that is not a beef with the Christian religion, nor is it a beef with the Bible. That's a beef with the Catholic Church and its corruption by itself. And the Catholic Church does not, does not represent Christianity. And for the most part, believe it or not, neither do most of even the Protestant churches out there. So any of you who think you know what religion is, from somebody who thought they knew 
what the deal was. Trust me, if you hate religion for any reason at all, if you dislike Jesus, you probably have some sort of misconception about it. I did, and literally since being saved, every single time, not one, I'm, I'm not even exaggerating, every single time that I meet somebody who has a beef or a problem with the Bible or God or Jesus, every single time, it's based on a false perception of what they think the Bible or the church is, and it's not correct. Wow, wow. Yeah. Um, what what an articulate answer to the question I ask. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you for sharing your heart. Uh, man, I am so blessed to have met you out in um, out in Branson, and my only regret is we didn't get to spend more time together. But, uh, man, I got to shake your hand and hug you, man, and uh, spend time with you there at the uh, Future Congress. And uh, cool, man. Um, so glad to know you. So glad uh, you're involved in Project Josiah. And um, uh, God bless you, man. Let me say a prayer for you. Father, I just ask for your blessing on Mark God, for his ministry, that, Lord, that you would increase it, Lord, that you would just... Um, even as he's just about seven months old in um, in serving you, Lord, I just pray that every day he would just become more powerful, Lord, just like Acts 9.22, that he would just come to a, a better understanding of your word, Lord, and uh, that it would just completely just um, take over his life, God, and that uh, you would uh, get rid of Mark and that you would uh, increase you, Lord, just like John the Baptist said, I have to decrease so that he may increase lord so uh thank you so much for mark god bless him and his work up there in wisconsin and please just watch over him and keep him safe in your name amen amen